thank you, Mr. President. Let me thank Senator Enzi for his uh, civility and his humor, and uh, I have enjoyed the process upon which we have um, gotten to where we are today. But I must say uh, that anyone who takes an objective look at this Republican budget uh, can do nothing else but conclude that this is an absolute disaster uh, for the working families of this country. And in fact, one of the problems that I have had in describing the Republican budget it is, is that it is so bad, is that it is so far out of touch from where the American people are that people really don't even believe you when you talk about what is in this budget. And that's what I'm going to do in a moment. But before I do that, uh, I think we can all agree uh, that what a budget is about is a development of priorities to address problems. Uh, you look at what's going on in our countries, you assess the needs of the American people, and you build a budget around those needs. So let me begin by assessing what I believe the needs of the American people are. The fundamental economic reality of today is that for the last 40 years, not the last six years, not the last 20 years, the last 40 years, the middle class of this country has been disappearing. Today, we have more people living in poverty than almost any time in the modern history of America. And yet, while that is going on, the gap between the very, very, very rich and everybody else is growing wider and wider. Today, in fact, in America, we have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on Earth. You know, I know many people think that in the United Kingdom, they have a queen and they have dukes and they have lords, they have all this aristocracy. Clearly, their distribution of wealth and income must be a lot worse than it is in the United States. That's not the case. Today, compared to every other major country on Earth, our distribution of wealth and income is worse, and it is worse in this country today than in any time since the late 1920s. Mr. President, hard to believe, but true. Today, 99% of all new income goes to the top 1%. Since the Wall Street crash of 2008, 99% of all new income goes to the top 1%. What that means is all over this country, you have people working not one job, two jobs, three jobs, people working longer hours for lower wages, and yet 99% of all of the new income generated is going to the top 1%. And in the midst of that reality, what our Republican colleagues say, well, hey, only 99% of all new income goes to the top 1%. What can we do to make the richest people even richer? Mr. President, median family income in this country since 1999 has gone down by almost $5,000. Families are struggling to put bread on the table, to send their kids to college, to take care of their basic needs, but the Republican budget says, oh, the middle class is shrinking, people are struggling. What can we do to make life even harder for the working families of our country? Mr. President, when we talk about unemployment in America, the official unemployment rate is 5.5%. The true unemployment, real unemployment, however, is 10.9%. If you include those people, who have given up looking for work, and people who are working part-time when they want to work full-time. Youth unemployment, which we never talk about, is over 17 percent, and African-American youth unemployment is literally off of the charts. Does the Republican budget say, how do we put the American people back to work? How do we help our young people who are desperately looking for jobs or looking for education? Quite the contrary. The Republican budget cuts virtually every program out there that is designed to help working families and unemployed workers. Mr. President, 
the typical male worker, that male worker in the middle of the American economy, incredibly made $783 less last year than he did 42 years ago. In other words, the middle class of this country is moving. Unfortunately, it is moving in the wrong direction. Does the Republican budget say, okay, we're going to raise the minimum wage so that everybody in this country who works 40 hours a week can live with dignity? No, it does not. In fact, again, it moves us in exactly the wrong direction. Now, Mr. President, while unemployment is much too high, while median family income has gone down, when millions of people are working longer hours for lower wages, there is another phenomenon taking place in this country. And that is that the wealthiest people and the largest corporations are doing phenomenally well. Not good, not pretty good, phenomenally well. Mr. President, today we live in a society where the top 1% owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. Here's the chart. The top 1% owns almost as much wealth. Here's the top 1% going up. Here's the bottom 90% going down. That is the reality. As the Republican budget say, wow, look at that extraordinary disparity in wealth, and we're going to do something about it. Yeah, they do do something about it. Their proposals will make the rich even richer and working people even poorer. Uh, Mr. President, uh, not only we have a situation today where, as incredible as it may sound, the wealthiest 14 people in this country, the wealthiest 14, not 1,400, not 14,000, the wealthiest 14 people in this country in the last two years have seen their wealth increase by $157 billion. 14 people have seen their wealth increase by $157 billion. That is more wealth, that $157 billion, than the bottom 130 million Americans. And here's just a chart talking about Bill Gates, 12 billion, Warren Buffett, 19 billion, Larry Ellison, 11 billion. This is just an increase in their wealth in a two-year period. And you know what the Republican budget says to these guys? Hey, $157 billion increase in your wealth in two years? Not enough. We're going to give your families a very significant tax break by ending the estate tax. Mr. President, we have the situation where one family in this country, the, Wal the Walton families, which owns Walmart, that one family owns more wealth than the bottom 42% of the American people. Mr. President, given the huge disparity of wealth and income, given the fact that millions of Americans today are struggling to put food on the table, given the fact that working families don't know how they can afford quality childcare for their kids, middle-class families don't know how they are able to send their kids to college. The Republican budget in virtually every instance moves us in exactly the wrong direction. Mr. President, the United States of America, sadly, is the only major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right something that I believe should occur. I think health care is a right, not a privilege. Today, we have made some gains under the Affordable Care Act. We have more people who have health insurance than was the case a number of years ago. That's a good thing. This is what the Republican budget does. Mr. President, the Republican budget, by ending the Affordable Care Act, by cutting Medicaid by over $400 billion, throws 27 million Americans off of health insurance. That's it. 27 million Americans, men, women, kids, off of health insurance. What happens to those people? How many of those 27 million people will die? Certainly thousands, because when they get sick, they're not going to be able to go to a doctor. How many of those people will suffer 
because they had illnesses that could have been treated or cured, but they can't go to a doctor. 27 million people off of health insurance, and you ask the Republicans, what happens to those people? They have no response at all. None. Zero. So instead of moving us in the direction of having health care for all of our people, they increase the number of uninsured by 27 million Americans. Mr. President, at a time when senior poverty is increasing, the Republican budget calls for ending Medicare as we know it by turning it into a voucher program. What does that mean? What the Republican idea is that we give people a voucher. I don't know that they have an exact amount for that voucher, maybe $8,000, whatever. And they say, here's a check for $8,000, and you're 85 years of age, and you're struggling with cancer. Here's your check for $8,000, and you go out to a private insurance company, and you get the best deal you can. Well, you tell me, Mr. President, if you're 85 years of age and you're struggling with cancer or heart disease and somebody gives you a check for $8,000, you tell me what kind of private insurance you're going to be able to get. How many days will it last you in the hospital? This is an effort to undermine and destroy Medicare. It is a disastrous idea. That is exactly what is in the Republican proposal. Mr. President, at a time when millions of disabled people are trying to survive on less than $14,000 a year, the Republican budget would pave the way for a massive cut to Social Security disability insurance. Mr. President, instead of making college more affordable, and I know that in the state of Vermont, my state, and I expect in states all over this country, young people are really wondering whether or not they want to go to college because they're so nervous about the debt that they will have when they come out. What is the Republican response to the crisis of the lack of affordability of college? Here's their response. They would cut Pell Grants by more than $85 billion over the next decade, which would make the cost of college education more expensive for some 8 million Americans. In other words, instead of addressing this crisis, instead of helping make us competitive in a global economy by giving us the best educated workforce, what they do is move us in the wrong direction. Mr. President, we are, as a nation, the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. Now, most people don't know it because almost all of that wealth goes to a handful of people on top. But in the midst of this extremely wealthy nation, disgracefully, today, we have millions and millions of families who literally are worrying about how they're going to put food on the table and feed their kids tomorrow and next week. I can tell you that in the state of Vermont, and I expect in states around this country, we have people who are working 40, 50 hours a week but because their wages are so low. They don't earn enough money to buy the food they need to properly take care of their kids, feed their kids well. And those families literally go to emergency food shelves all over America. These are working people who never in their lives thought that they would have to go to an emergency food shelf. That is what they're doing all over America. And what is the Republican response? What is the Republican response to hunger in America? To taking care of the most basic need that we have? The Republican response is massive cuts, massive cuts to food stamps, to the WIC program. The WIC program is a wonderful program designed to make sure that pregnant women, low-income pregnant women, get good nutrition and that their babies have good nutrition. How basic can it get? Cut those programs. Cut the Meals on Wheels programs for fragile seniors. Mr. President, in the midst of throwing 27 million Americans off of health insurance, in the midst of cutting $85 billion for Pell Grants to make it harder for our kids to go to college, in the midst of making massive cuts in nutrition programs, which will increase hunger and suffering in the United States of America, Republicans do something else that is literally remarkable. And I know people think I'm not telling the truth. I am. What they say is that when the rich are getting richer, when almost all new income and wealth 
is going to the people on top. What they have decided to do for the wealthiest 6,000 families in America, the top two-tenths of 1%, what they say to these billionaire families, we are going to give you a massive tax break by repealing the estate tax. What we are going to do is give you a $269 billion tax break that goes to the top two-tenths of 1%. 99.8% of the American people will not gain one nickel in benefit from the repeal of the estate tax. Only goes to the wealthiest of the wealthy. But to add insult to injury, while giving a huge tax break for the billionaire class, what the Republican budget also says is let's see if we can raise taxes on lower income and working class families by allowing the expanded earned income tax credit and child tax credit to expire. These are tax credits that go to working families and lower income families who have kids. And we added something. We made that a more generous benefit a few years ago. They're going to allow that to expire at the same time as they gave a massive tax break to the wealthiest family in this country. Mr. President, one of the reasons that this country, my friend from Wyoming, Mr. Enzi, talks repeatedly about the deficit, and I agree, deficit is a problem. But he will acknowledge that in the last six years under President Obama, we have made significant progress in reducing the deficit. I think something by about two-thirds, but it still remains very high. No question about it. We have an $18 trillion debt, real issue, no denying it. One of the reasons that we have a huge debt, not the only reason, but one of the reasons, is that the United States under President Bush went into war in Iraq, went into war in Afghanistan. Now, nobody knows what the end cost of that war will be by the time we take care of the last veteran 50 or 60 years from now, but the best guesses are that those wars will cost us four to six trillion dollars by the time we take care of the needs of our last veteran who served in those wars. Mr. So President, how do we pay for those wars? How do we pay for those wars? Every other war that this country fought, presidents had the courage to go forward and say, wars are expensive, we're going to raise taxes. Not in this case. Those wars were put on the credit card, four to six trillion dollars, and we didn't pay for it. But apparently, my Republican colleagues haven't learned a simple lesson that you can't be honest and worry about the deficit and then go to war and not pay for it. What they have done in this budget is to increase Pentagon spending by another $38 billion next year and $186 billion over the next 10 years. And how is that paid for? Oh, it's not paid for. It goes on to the credit card. They put it all into the so-called OCO account, and this is, by the way, an account that many of my conservative friends have called an accounting gimmick. So here we are. Here we are, Mr. President, at a time when this country probably faces more serious problems than any time since the Great Depression. Middle class is disappearing, poverty much too high, the gap between the very, very, very rich and everybody else growing wider and wider, real unemployment much too high, young people unable to afford to go to college. And on every one of those issues, the Republican budget does exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. In the year 2015, we should not be voting or bringing forth a budget which makes the billionaires even richer while cutting programs for people who are struggling. And it's with an $18 trillion debt, we should not be increasing military spending by simply adding that money onto the deficit. So, Mr. President, I would hope uh, that um, people in this body, in the United States Senate, take a deep breath, appreciate, in fact, what is going on to working families in this country, and will vote no on this disastrous budget.